obviously this is a team that's notoriously been called chokers and they don't have mental fortitude. Yeah, but it just keeps happening, right? It's always at the semifinals. It's got to be this mental block, but it's so weird because even it's not, it's not even like apparent to themselves, you know? The look on Device's face. He's had a shocker of a game to finish things off here in the major. 16 place five is a disappointing way to end it. Yeah, it's quite a historic moment right yeah, here. Totally. This is uh, Stralis not making it to the legend status and obviously North dropping out as well. And adds uh, questions of whether this team will stay around. May just joined the roster a few months ago, bring more firepower to the squad. He's certainly done that. And all on Magis now in the 1v2, the bomb now down as well for FaZe. And oh my god, Magis! I don't know who can challenge them anymore. This is just a look. For some people, it's a problem. For others, it's basking in the greatness. That can't possibly be real. They're the best team in Counter-Strike history, in my opinion. This is the most competitive era. Doesn't matter. None of these teams can match Astralis. So take down Alex, and now they're pushing. Oh! Untouchable. Undisputed. He's raised them down what? for an ace. Astralis, you're kings of Counter-Strike. Back-to-back ECS, back-to-back Pro League, Marseille, Season 7, Chicago, and now for the first time ever at home, Season 8, Astrology are the champions of ESL Pro League, and for the first time in history, the best of all time! For years before CSGO's release, the Danish Counter-Strike scene was rightly revered as one of the titans of 1.6 competition. Players like Trace, Zonic, and Sunday built a legacy of CS excellence. But when Global Offensive released, Denmark took a while to find its footing, and the world waited to see when, or maybe if, Danish teams would again return to the podium consistently. In December of 2015, it looked like Denmark might actually get their answer after Team Solomit's entire CSGO roster decided to simultaneously quit and form their own independent team. Device, Dupree, Zipix, Cajun B, and Kerrigan, along with Team Dignitas' Zonic as coach, came together under the banner of Team Question Mark, a placeholder organization that would later be converted into Astralis in January of 2016. Device and Dupree have played together since 2013, while Zonic's time as a 1.6 pro left him well equipped for the struggles to come. The exact details of what led to the split have never been fully ironed out. Both sides famously stated different reasons for the split. What's abundantly clear, however, was that TSM wanted to run the team one way, and the players wanted to run it differently. We, we wanted to see if our own organization could match what we could get from other organizations and it basically could it it makes more it, it makes more meaning for us to play under Astralis now than it would be to play under another brand. Once the Danes were able to form the team they dreamed of, Astralis' first year showed flashes of promise. That said, despite having an incredibly talented roster with great chemistry on paper, Astralis had a problem. They couldn't stop choking at high-level events. And now Zipnix with it all on his shoulders, or it's going to be Fnatic through to those finals. Bomb is planted. And Zipnix now walking in, catches out Flusher, gets pressure from JW, and there it is. Fnatic get out of those semis and get themselves into the finals. Astralis sadly floundering under what Fnatic brought into this game. And by choking, we mean really choking. Time and time again, Astralis would take it to perennial powerhouses like SK Gaming or NIP until suddenly, sometimes after a pause was called or the map changed, the team's luck would flatline. I know the Astralis guys pretty well, like a couple of them are good friends of mine. I don't, I'm not even sure if they're completely clued up on the reasons why what happens happens. You talk to Device many times, right? And it's like, if you ask them, they, I've interviewed Kerrigan as well and asked them specifically about it and they hate talking about it. They hate calling it choking, right? Yeah, but it just keeps happening, right? And it's always at the semifinals. It's gotta be this mental block, but it's so weird because even it's not, it's not even like apparent to themselves, you know? This phenomenon, which haunted them throughout the course of 2016, would come to be known as the Astralis Curse. That's Cajun as well, gonna fall. And I dare say it, it's over. Navi are in the grand final, the second straight time. Just to reiterate, Astralis 
looking in some of the best form we've ever seen the men coming into this, this semi-final. But at ESL 1 Cologne in July, the year's final major, they were facing much more than just a curse. Aside from general nerves, Astralis was dealing with a roster shakeup. Kirby, who joined the team only a few weeks prior after being traded by Dignitas for Cajun B, wasn't able to play, and neither could Dupree after coming down with appendicitis. Astralis called on Glaive, one of Device's childhood best friends, and Sonic, the team's coach, to fill the two spots respectively. Definitely not ideal. This is a horrible situation. You feel like Astralis they can't get a break right now. Everything they turn up to, it seems like there's something that goes horribly wrong when they do well in the groups. Their counterparts just fall apart and they actually have a horrible run to the actual playoffs. But today is a very special occasion. The fact that we're missing Dupree as well, one of their star players. Shout out to Peter. We love you. Great personality in the scene. Hope he's getting better. But uh, this is a massive loss for them going into this one. Despite being down two of their core players, Astralis fought fiercely to get to the quarterfinals where they played Virtus Pro. At times, looking like they had what it took to make a run at the title. It's going to be a tough retake. They do have the kill on Taz, but it's Sonic again, joined by Glaive. Glaive with three already. This is beautiful work from Astralis, keeping four up, and Kerrigan closes out. Astralis kick this one off with a bang, already a bomb plant. A hell of a lot of kills as well to boot. They're 15 seconds. Sonic's found him. It's down to Snacks in the 1v2 here. This could be Astralis going 13-13. It might just be lucky for Astralis at this point. Here we go, Stax goes down. There's Clay for the kill, and Astralis are back in this game. And what looked like a disastrous start has turned into something incredible. Astralis will not go down without a fight. Zipnix gets that first kill and just falls back and baits him right into the crosshair of the vice. This is beautifully done, a second kill. It's all down to Neo, and he gets nothing. 11 to 4 for Astralis. This is a masterful first half coming through here from Astralis. These guys are looking exceedingly solid here. But even with their best efforts, better still than most expected, Astralis couldn't stop what seemed, at this point, inevitable. There's Snacks coming in with one, and it's left Zipnix in a horrible situation. Bialy's already on the hunt, and you can see them looking for it, and the spray comes in. Zipnix knows his days are numbered, but he's still fighting the good fight, but it's at the end! Pasha does it for Virtus Pro! And ladies and gentlemen, that is VP putting themselves into the semi-finals after a tough match against Astralis who fought with sheer heart, grit, determination, anything you can think of, they put it up there. I think that today we should talk about different team. We should talk about Astralis and how much resilience they showed playing with two stand-ins. I think that we should all clap for them now, guys. Neither 2016 major went the way Astralis had wanted, but the second major at Cologne had at least offered somewhat of a glimmer of hope. And with that, Astralis decided they needed to reorganize. In October of that year, Kerrigan left for FaZe, which gave Astralis the chance to sign Glaive for real. With the Vice, a multi-talented monster of a player, and Glaive becoming one of CSGO's best up-and-coming IGLs at the helm, Astralis seemed to have its strongest roster yet, but they still needed to get their mentality right. The pressure of being on stage, of competing in front of so many people and trying to prove that they belonged among the game's best was clearly affecting Astralis' ability to perform at the highest level. So management decided to try something practically unheard of in esports at that time. The organization, which was quickly becoming a well-oiled machine compared to the traditional bunch of friends on stage CS powerhouses, hired a sports psychologist. I have said that while Glaive has been important, the introduction of a sports psychologist for Astralis also very important with their history of choking. Team Astralis, it's a dream client for me. First, we started off working with the team spirit. Then, of course, I do individual work with them because all of them have their strengths and weaknesses as players. It's always day by day. You kind of like see in what kind of shape the boys are in, how they're doing. They're constantly developing, so you have to keep adapting to that as well. So it's all days are different. With a more holistic approach to the physical and mental health of its players, Astralis began to excel rapidly, winning first at ECS Season 2 in December of 2016. And then, after a legacy of disappointments on the major stage, they finally did it. It's the team that struggled in groups but showed true form against Liquid. They've never looked stronger since adding Glaive. 
This is Astralis! Obviously, this is a team that's notoriously been called chokers and they don't have that mental fortitude. Do you think on that evidence we're seeing a change there? They either lose very, very narrowly or they smash people. Yeah. And so Astralis pretty much, they're on a course to go to the final. And so if you're a Fnatic, you can say, yeah, maybe they can choke, but you have to be able to put them in that position before that can even happen. Device alone, Kieri's not there. He's got the high HP, but he has an off. He's missed shots. That could have cost him, it does. What a shot from Crims. Fnatic in the most magical way of pulling it back, but look at Kirby! Right time, right place! Astralis overcoming all odds, and the curse that has always been their problem. It's Crims down, it's one to go. It's only Dennis remaining, desperate with a bomb and 15 HP. Caught out, blinded up, and Kirby's got him! For the first time, for the Danish side, they'll find themselves in a major final. And that is a huge, huge relief. But they're not done. These guys mean business. They knew coming into this tournament they had one goal. They're the favorites for a reason. One versus two. He has to clutch this. Astral is mentally. They need this to get back into the game. He sees the gun barrel. Headshot on one. Now comes Pasha next in line. Dupree going for it, doing the damage. And he gets it. One versus two. This is incredible. Are we going to see it? Are Astral is going to break the curse? Are they going to win their first major, the first time they're in the finals? And their first title? We'll find out because the action's on. And Gabby opens it up. Takes down Bialy already. Here's the start, four more kills, and they will have made it the full distance. Snacks in a uncomfortable position, he goes down with the max 70, can't make it happen. Finally, Pasha coming in with a refrag, but he's down. The bomb has been picked up by Dupree, they get the spray, Neo takes one, and turns it there. And Estrella has to win the first major championship, 16-14 against Vertus Pro. Unbelievable. For the first time ever, Astralis had won a major. And not just that, but their final is considered one of the greatest CS matches ever played. Despite the win, including another first place win over FaZe at IEM Katowice, Astralis slowly fell into old habits. Throughout the rest of the year, Astralis resumed its routine of placing anywhere from 7th to 2nd place at every competition on the board. In November, Device revealed that he had a hiatal hernia and would be on medical leave for at least a month. For all intents and purposes, Astralis was done for 2017. Yet Device was still looking forwards. Motivated by his medical leave, Device pushed to have even more self-care amenities provided to the players, including personal trainers and chefs to keep them both physically and mentally healthy. The final piece of the puzzle came when Kirby unexpectedly, and without announcement, left Astralis to join North in February of 2018, something that teammates like Device felt was a bit of a betrayal. So yeah, it's a bit sad, but um, I hope that he does well, and when I see him at events, we say hi, and I still feel like we can get a good relationship out of it, but it's just, yeah, it's just sad to feel betrayed in, in some way. Regardless of how hurt they were by his sudden departure, Astralis needed a replacement for Kirby, and in a surprise move, named Magisk as their new fifth. This officially marked the beginning of a new era for the team, what they jokingly called Astralis 2.0. And at that moment, they assembled a lineup of the five Danes that would go on to become Counter-Strike deities. This new Astralis took 2018 by storm. Beginning with their first place sweep at the April 2018 DreamHack Masters in Marseille in the grand final matchup against Na'Vi. They've been hunting for for so long. Majors joined the roster a few months ago to try and bring more firepower into the squad. He's certainly done that. They're looking well-rounded. I think they're in the conversation for the best team in the world with this performance. Nature's gonna prime that nade, it could take Edward down, he's on 9 health. They're gonna be able to get the bomb, they have enough time to rotate, but they're not gonna go for it. Here comes Regis, he's not gonna get the spray on point, but Glaive could, through the smoke, he's trying to find a way to kill Simple, who simply will not fall. And now Glaive's gonna be pushing this smoke, and he's got the kill! Astralis are victorious! But this is the main storyline. Ladies and gentlemen, your champions are DreamHack Masters Marseille. It's Astralis! Including that win, Astralis proceeded to win four out of the next seven premier championships they played in before the Face It London Major in September of 2018. There, they sprinted to the Grand Finals, where they would once again square off with Na'Vi in a best of three matchup and, once again, sweep the team with ease. And you chase after him, you run straight into another one who gets a free kill. You just don't know. And here he is again. Grenades to follow up as well. Two players left now. 
between Astralis and the first map, and there goes Simple as well. Three kills for Device, and Edward can't do anything about it either. That is new, firmly, very firmly taken by Astralis. Simple gets himself a headshot, and that's Na'Vi on the way in. Eight seconds to plant, though. They have to plant the bomb. Can they find their way onto a plant? For Amy, it's going to be close, but no, and it's denied. And there's no chance here in the 1v3 for Electronic as Astralis close it down. Flaming now with the 570s baiting. The player on short B is red. Touching the bomb, Ardigan to peak. Holding it now, and there is it. It's just out of Flamey. It's not going to happen. Astralis have won the face at London Major. The Astralis error is absolutely cemented. A team that is surely a cup above everybody else. Every single facet of their gameplay, from practice rooms to the grand final stage, is perfect, James. And with that win, they became more than a team that broke their curse. They showed everyone that this was their era of Counter-Strike. Definitely the best team in the world, no argument about that. The preparation, the commitment, the way that this team approached the game is unrivaled. We have not seen this before in Counter-Strike history. As they accumulated more and more wins, it became clear. They were the new kings of CSGO, and they solidified their grip on that title when they won ESL Pro League Season 8 and secured the crown jewel of CSGO cash prizes, the Intel Grand Slam. Nitro has not turned up in this final map, and Astralis are so close to this point. One kill is going to secure it, and that's it! The Grand Slam is theirs! ESL Pro League Season 8 as well! Back-to-back -back ECS, back-to-back -back Pro League, Marseille, Season 7, Chicago, and now for the first time ever at home, Season 8, Astralis are the champions of ESL Pro League, and for the first time in history, the best of all time! They accomplished everything a CS team could dream of in 2018, but it felt like they didn't even flinch. Two majors wasn't good enough for this team. They were poised to drive the final nail into the coffin of all their haters. First, by winning IEM Katowice and becoming the second team in CSGO history to claim three majors. Early 2019 can't possibly be as good as 2018, but there's no signs of them slowing down. Not for Dupree either. He'll get two. And walk in the smoke, Glaive. He'll only punish one, but it's just Ariel to find, and it's done! They had one goal. That's it. That's all they wanted. Back to back. And they've done it now. But you can't mess with greatness. You can't mess with history. And these guys are writing it in every event. Intel Extreme Masters, Champions, Majors, back to back! Astralis again! It's out of it! At Katowice, Dupree, whose father had passed away just days before, was overtaken with emotion by the magnitude of what he and his teammates had accomplished. Thank you very much, Alex. It's an emotional stage right now. I'm with Dupree, who I can see has got tears in his eyes. Emotionally for you right now, you must be going through absolutely everything. Yeah, it's uh, it's, it's very unreal. Um, I came into this tournament with my father. Uh, yeah, he passed away just before I got here, and his last wish was that I I went here, and so I really want to dedicate this, this win to my father. Mate, come on. And then at Star Ladder Berlin in 2019, they made a statement that will echo in the catacombs of Counter Strike history for years to come. And he doesn't know where to look, doesn't know what to pay attention. A miss shot, and he's gone. And Astralis delivering the final uppercut to knock out Avangard. You can't miss anything if you want to even have a chance here. Sanji rushing up through upper. Dom Dupree is ready to take him down. And now there's no more retake from that side. It's Buster and Adren. Two versus four. An impossible retake by any standard. Device will take down Buster, leaving Adren in a one versus four. And ladies and gentlemen, they've done it for the fourth time. The Strats win the major in Berlin. The fourth time overall. Three total in a row. They have just re-established dominance. Forget the hiccup that was Team Liquid. Astralis seems back and in a big way. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up once again for your champions, Astralis! 
they won their fourth major, three of them in a row, and became the most decorated team of all time. The single greatest Counter-Strike roster to ever live. Yet, despite their success, the latter part of 2019 wasn't all sunshine and roses for Astralis. First, Team Liquid stole a bit of Astralis' spotlight with their runaway win of the Intel Grand Slam in record time. The org was also accused of having a conflict of interest with tournament organizer Blast. Allegations were made that Astralis was showing favoritism towards Blast competitions by choosing to selectively attend Blast events over others. Refresh Entertainment is a privately held Danish company that manages and operates the best CSGO team in the world. That's Astralis. They also own and operate the Blast Pro series of events. Now, so far this year, Astralis have been to all two Blast events, and they've skipped out on three premier tournaments that are not Blast. Now, this has prompted a social media conversation along these lines. Is this a conflict of interest? And what bearing might it have on the future of competitive CSGO? The community were beginning to become critical of Astralis for picking and choosing the events they'd attend, but that sentiment quickly dissolved as COVID-19 ousted lands for the foreseeable future. The now called online era had started, and during this time, both Glaive and Zipex took time off due to burnout and stress. For months, speculation brewed over whether the two were gone for good, or if Astralis was going to break up but both had returned to the game by October. But I know that Glaive was saying how he had some time away and now he feels like really fired up. While Astralis had spent much of the year utilizing sub-in players like Esetag and Yugi in place of its regulars, it wasn't particularly unusual for them. For a while, the team often had a sixth man on call, a tactic that has since been heavily employed during the pandemic by other teams that faced similar issues. Indeed, it's been the storyline of the day. Are we gonna see those mid-match substitutions coming out from Vitality? And indeed, we are. Masuta okay. is gonna be coming out. <laughs> Nivera is going to Ooh. be coming coming in next for Dust 2. Astralis fans held out hope that this was simply a reality of cheering for the org. They'd been committed to taking their foot off the gas to allow their players breaks. But surely when lands returned, the five Danes would be back competing for an unprecedented fifth major. Or so we all thought. And this is the case, ladies and gentlemen. NIP have completed uh, the device signing so it's Rez, Plopsky, Hamper, CTR, and Device. Who the f*** thought that was ever going to happen? I don't know really where we start right now, Striker. Do we talk about like the fallout of like what this means in the scheme of things? What are, what are we... We kind of got to let this soak in for a second. <laughs> exactly. Like I feel like we need like 20 minutes just to kind of like let this down on me, I guess. I, st I still feel like I'm dreaming. I have no idea why this happened. The era of Astralis as we knew it was over. Since the announcement, Device's former teammates have said that they understand his decision, but admitted that they were caught off guard by it. The first thing I said to him was that it's okay, I understand. I think that's what I said to him, uh, the way he presented it. But then afterwards, I was uh, I was obviously shocked and I was like, what is actually going on? It's sad, obviously. Uh, we've been, uh, I've been disappointed, sad, angry, uh, both with Device and the whole situation. Even though there are some things that I don't understand, maybe we could have worked it out. Uh, we have still been through so much that it doesn't change my, my view on him as a person. Uh, he will still be a dear, dear friend of the team. For years, Device had served as not only an incredible in-game asset, but also a beacon of clarity, hope, and optimism for the team. He was the glue that held things together, and tearing that band-aid off has been painful for what's now left of Astralis. It will be hard for Glaive to to create a new system. It will require that Dupree, Magis, and Subnix is is also on board on this. And then I think they can do it. They need to like, don't go into this. Oh, it always worked with device. These uh, these things, they need to reset and like build it up from zero again. That's my guess because device was, yeah, was pretty much the best player in the world for, for three or four years in my opinion. Despite some lately hurt feelings, Astralis have been loud in their support and appreciation for Device and everything he has contributed to the team. Uh, well, obviously, Nikolai, I know that you have you have made up <clears throat> your decision, and I respect it fully. And I'm I'm gonna start crying now because it's actually quite emotional. <laughs> um, how do you put it out? I mean, I respect everything you've done and what we've been through. 
And yeah, I mean, I wish you the best going forward. I'm going to try and do my best to fulfill your shoes. Um, but we'll see where everything goes from now. And I hope we'll see you at other events. Uh, we've already talked about this, and I appreciate all the things we've been through. With the vice gone, a gaping hole has been left in Astralis. Not just because the world's greatest CSGO team lost its star player, but also because he was the team's leader and guiding light during its darkest hours. All of that aside, Astralis doesn't actually have to prove anything to anyone. They've already done what no other team could do. Four major wins, the first Intel Grand Slam. Even if they disband next month or simply never secure another major again, they're already the greatest of all time. Counter-Strike is a beautiful, timeless game. And what these five Danes did will echo through the minds of every new generation of fraggers for years to come. And no matter what the future holds, everyone will know that Astralis truly shot to the stars. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring that notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages.